And you're welcome back to The Breakfast on PLUS TV Africa. Let's now take a look at Nigeria exiting recession. So it's no longer news that uh, Nigeria, Africa's largest economy, against all expectations, exited recession as its gross domestic product GDP grew by 0.11% in the last quarter of 2020 year on year. But the governor of the Central Bank of Nigeria, Godwin Emefile, had expressed optimism last year that the country would come out of recession in the fourth quarter of the year 2020. Also, the Minister of Finance had said that Nigeria would exit recession historically fast. According to a report released by the National Bureau of Statistics, MBS, this is the first positive quarterly growth in the last three quarters, and that's following the growth in telecommunications and agriculture, which seem to make up for the sharp drop in oil prices and production. And in just a few minutes, we'll be joined by the senior special assistant to President Muhammad Buhari on public affairs at Juru Ingilali uh, to discuss this with us and help us, you know, analyze what he feels about the country exiting recession. So, Justin, we discussed this issue when on news Friday. broke last week on Friday. Yes, we did. I mean, we had an economist, uh, uh, Shegu Shokuton, who told us what he felt about this, yes. especially his interpretation of what this might mean for the common man on the streets. Mm. Uh, let's, let's briefly talk about that, okay. especially as it seems that we have this reports by the MBS, we have the statistics from the IMF, the World Bank, you know, we hear big words and big figures big thrown figures. out, but for the common man, they it doesn't seem to, to mean much. They don't, they don't even know what to interpret it, you know, uh, just how to interpret it, rather, because uh, we hear 0 0.11, you know, positive uh, growth, we hear uh, uh, that's for just third quarter, while uh, in the entire year, we didn't actually, uh, we actually recorded them a minus um, uh, 1.96 or thereabout. You know, what the common man is interested in is that uh, he wants to go to the market with just about 5,000 uh, and should be able to get enough um, food stuff uh, to take care of uh, uh, his family and of course maybe just have some change to, uh, you know, get transport to go to work the next day. So when you start quoting figures and uh, it is not so realistic to the Nigerian, you know, on the street, uh, yes. it does not make sense to any of them because uh, they just want to be happy. They just want to be able to, you know, meet ends every day. Indeed. So we'll be joined by our jury in just a minute. Let's take a break and we'll be right back. You're welcome back to The Breakfast. We now have our guest, Adjuri Ingilale, Senior Special Assistant to the President on Public Affairs. We have him via phone. Good morning. Thanks for joining us. Good morning to both of you. Thank you for having me. All right. So no before we talk about the success story about how Nigeria unexpectedly recovered from recession, let's talk a bit about how we got into it in the first place, especially how the COVID-19 pandemic and the lockdowns affected the economy in Nigeria. Yes, thank you very much. So there's really no doubt about the fact that uh, you, we've seen the adverse economic impact of COVID-19 pandemic uh, on not just the Nigerian economy, but on the global economy. Several countries around the world, including the most wealthy ones, moving into recession. Uh, obviously, with the shutdowns, uh, we had done the same. Uh, I think one of the major things uh, that uh, had really kind of gone underreported over the last uh, several months in many ways uh, was that President Mohamed Buhari took very swift action last March at the onset of the pandemic. He put together the Economic Sustainability Committee, which, put, which now designed and is now implementing the 2.3 trillion naira economic sustainability plan under the watch of His Excellency the Vice President, Professor Yemi Oshibajo. Within that, you have multiple elements uh, of that program that have gone into implementation to really uh, expedite the process uh, of pulling us out of recession. Number one, you recall that we put together the special public works program where we've engaged 1,000 young persons from every local government area of the Federation to be involved in, you know, really the productive sectors. When we talk about constructing rural roads and all of these materials used uh, in the road construction, uh, in the mass agricultural program, uh, are being sourced locally. So you also have the indirect jobs in addition to the direct jobs. 
in addition to that, now of course we put in place the uh, national social housing program, the solar uh, energy program where we're building, uh, distributing and maintaining uh, well over a million solar home systems nationwide. And then, of course, you have the survival fund where we have made direct interventions uh, for MSMEs uh, who are struggling during the pandemic uh, with, a, uh, with grants, not loans. They don't have to pay the money back. 75 billion naira survival fund is a set of grants that we provided to MSMEs to ensure that those jobs of their workers are not lost uh, because of this pandemic. So they've had uh, these direct resources. We've been paying the salaries of hundreds of thousands of workers uh, under these MSMEs uh, nationwide. And I think when you put all of this together, you begin to understand why it is we were able to beat all of the projections uh, and exit recession well before the deadline of the end of March. All right, thank you, um, Adri. Uh, well put, um, all that you have said, all the plans that the federal government outlined, and you know, in less than a year, they were able to achieve uh, some of that, if not uh, most of that. But right now, Nigeria technically is out of recession, uh, but some people believe that um, it is not yet Uhuru, that um, Nigeria is not out of the woods. What do you think? Yes, absolutely. Uh, we, we totally, as an administration, uh, agree uh, with that analysis. The fact of the matter is, uh, we are not in Abuja uh, clapping for ourselves or dancing about the fact that we have exited recession. We recognize that this was noteworthy, a very important first step in the right direction. Uh, but our focus has immediately turned uh, to multiplying that growth, because the reality is, uh, in this country, there is a lot of economic pain, a lot of economic suffering. Uh, and we are, even as we're doing our parts to try and alleviate that as much as possible within the scarce resources of the nation, uh, we recognize that we're not out of the woods. We recognize that uh, Nigerians are not in a, in a celebratory mood. Uh, and it's because of the kind of pain that we know is in the country. So until Nigerians have reason to celebrate, uh, we are not going to be celebrating. We're going to be working. So how soon are Nigerians actually going to be celebrating vis-a-vis uh, -vis the you know, galloping in inflation that they are faced with presently? Well, I, I think there's no doubt uh, that when, when you look at the economic fundamentals of the country, considering the global economic recession that, uh, that we've commonly been in with, with countries around the world, uh, definitely inflation has gone up, of course, but we also recognize that with the recession in 2014, we saw the inflation rate balloon to about 18%. We are not there yet. Uh, and it was this administration of the last four or five years that took it from the 18% uh, down to about 11% uh, before we've now entered uh, this uh, previous, uh, new recession that we've just come out of. So Nigerians can expect, based on the, the history of President Mohamed Dubari's administration, we've dealt with inflation before, we will deal with it again. The major thing now is to ensure that uh, we emerge out of recession uh, in a way that is sustainable, in a way that allows us to multiply uh, the, 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 the marginal growth that we have just recorded, uh, in a, uh, obviously uh, it beating the expectations, yes, but that does not now mean that we have uh, room to be resting on our oars. There's still a long way to go. For us, uh, we are focused on ensuring that we don't just get back to uh, you know, extensive uh, economic growth. It's also about what comprises that growth. And that is why we're proud of the fact that over the last five years, a lot of the growth we have seen came from the non-oil sector because we've had consistently depressed oil prices. So we've seen the growth of manufacturing, the growth of telecoms, banking, uh, agriculture, of course, construction across the country, etc. So we're, we believe that as time is going on and we see this gradual uptick uh, in the global oil price, uh, that better days are coming for all Nigerians. All right, Ajiri, let me take you up on that, what you just mentioned. Really, this economic rebound, you know, according to the MBS report, was because of growth in non-oil sectors, like you rightly mentioned, especially agriculture and telecoms. What plans does the government have, have to continue to boost these sectors? Thank you very much. You know, for, for us, the focus is really about understanding that the future of the Nigerian economy is not going to be about sharing oil money. 
the future of the Nigerian economy is going to be uh, an inclusive, a, a, you know, inclusive growth that is based on the, 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 the productive contributions of well, Nigerian uh, businessmen and women, MSMEs across the country. Uh, that is why over the last five years, even with depressed, uh, depressed oil revenues, depressed revenues generally, uh, President Mohamed Buhari has mobilized over 400 billion naira uh, in, in the form of zero and low interest uh, credit facilities uh, to hundreds of thousands of MSMEs under the Bank of Industry. He's done well over a trillion naira in the, in the same single digit interest uh, capital to, uh, to MSMEs uh, from the Central Bank of Nigeria. And we're going to continue to ramp up those investments not just in terms of the survival fund, but also the uh, national, national Youth Investment Fund uh, that, we, that is already factored into the 2021 budget, where we're providing uh, a zero to low interest capital to businesses owned by our young people aged between 18 and 35, particularly in uh, fintech, financial technology, and creative art industries across the country. We believe that investing in our MSMEs is really going to put us in a position of sustainable, inclusive economic growth that is based on uh, maximal employment of our people, as opposed to uh, the oil sector, which is obviously capital intensive, but labor unintensive. So we're moving very aggressively into the labor intensive sectors, such as agriculture, MSME development, uh, and many others. All right, let's talk about the manufacturing um, sector. In as much as um, you have said that uh, the federal government has actually diversified the economy, mm -hmm. but uh, that sector is still suffering today because of um, rationing of um, foreign exchange. Uh, is the federal government looking in that direction anytime soon to stop that? Well, there's no doubt. I mean, if you look in the, in, in the kind of the, the projections moving forward, uh, we are already beginning to see, I, I'm sure those who have been watching carefully our foreign reserves over the last several months would have seen a, a gradual uptick generally. I think we are moving in that direction. There's no doubt uh, that certainly the, the rebound in the global oil price is going to assist us in the immediate term to make the kinds of investments I'm referring to uh, over the medium to long term. Uh, so uh, obviously with the unprecedented uh, level of construction we're seeing across the country, we're seeing new roads bridges, airports, seaports, uh, power plants, dams, of course, farm-related farm, uh, allied, uh, agricultural allied uh, uh, infrastructure being upgraded. Uh, what, what all of this comes out to uh, is a situation whereby we will begin to have the kind of infrastructure uh, that will be attracting the kinds of foreign direct investments, particularly in view of the implementation of the African Continental Free Trade Agreement, where you have uh, one trillion uh, plus new dollars coming into the continent, hundreds of millions of jobs coming into the continent, and our focus is ensuring that we are in a strategically competitive position against the Egypts, the Moroccos, the South Africa, the Ghanas, uh, and the Senegals to, to attract that investment. And the way that we do that is ensuring that we get this infrastructure on ground and we get it on ground uh, as urgently and as quickly as possible. And it's not just about the hard infrastructure, by the way. It's also about the soft infrastructure. It's also, also about the regulatory reforms. Which is Ajui, hold up one minute. All right, Ajuri, can, you, can, can I get in a word in just um, a minute? Uh, fine. Uh, specifically, what I asked was uh, the rationing of foreign exchange for the manufacturing sector. Is that going to be addressed anytime soon? That, that's what I'm saying. As, 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 time is, as time is going on, obviously we're going to see enhanced liquidity in the system. We know that we're going to be having uh, greater revenues to have the, to give the, 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 the fiscal authority, the monetary authorities, the kind of uh, leeway they need uh, to be able to make uh, life easier for our manufacturers, etc. Already, you've seen the kinds of support that we provided over the last uh, six to six to nine months. We've already provided 1.1 trillion naira. Uh, to, to, to manufacturing uh, uh, firms uh, across the country. That was part of the COVID-19 bailout. So yes, I think these are things that, uh, that uh, certainly the Central Bank of Nigeria is going to have the, the leeway to deal with as time is going on and our econ economic fundamentals continue to improve. No doubt, this is a positive you know, news, positive growth. You know, the fact that we're having non-oil sectors grow in Nigeria and that we're exiting recession. But for the ordinary man on the streets, I, I want you to really emphasize on this because, you know, we had a guest earlier and we we're talking about this. And the, the word on the streets is that 
these are just grammar. These are just, you know, jargon. Statistics. The ordinary man on the street does not understand what you're saying. So really, what are the basic plans? We're talking about economic policies that would make Nigeria a better place to live, especially for young Africans, young Nigerians. Yes, thank you very much, my sister. First of all, it's extremely important to note uh, that one of the reasons why I emphasize starting out, that even as we are out of recession, we are not celebrating is because we recognize that our people are going through a lot of economic pain, just as people around the world, even in the wealthiest countries of the world, are currently going through. I think the focus for us is not about jargon, but it's about the, the things that are touching the lives of our people. So when we talk about the survival fund, it is not just an academic discussion that I'm having with you this morning. We're talking about hundreds of thousands of, of, of Nigerians, men and women, who have gone to that website, who have registered uh, their companies, and their workers are now being paid. Hundreds of thousands of workers across about 200 plus 1,000 MSMEs in all states of the Federation uh, that are currently having their salaries directly uh, funded by the federal government of Nigeria. That is not grammar. That is real life action that is, that is impacting uh, real families across this country. If you look at the Special Public Works Program, the 1,000 young people in every local government area that have been now and been engaged financially to be able to productively contribute to the national economy, rebuilding infrastructure, etc. They will, they will tell you that this is not grammar because they're out there receiving their stipends through their bank accounts and they're doing the work that they're, uh, they have been called to do. So these are not measures that we're just talking about to have a fancy conversation. These are things that are real in the lives of people. And then, of course, if you if the COVID-19 household loans that we've been providing uh, to hundreds of thousands of families across the country uh, at very zero to low interest, uh, these are things that people are benefiting from. Uh, and they always contact me, whether it's on Twitter, Facebook, they say, wow, I didn't know anybody. And I was able to go online, I was able to register, and now I have received uh, this, this low interest loan and all of that. So real people are being impacted by these policies. And that is a huge reason why you have seen us emerge out of recession much sooner than anybody anticipated. All right, um, um, Ajuri, um, the agri sector, like you have um, rightly said, uh, grew the economy in the, uh, Q4 of 2020 as it grew by 3.42%. Um, but looking at the challenges that we have in most parts of Nigeria, the security uh, challenges uh, which have um, actually have, um, caused uh, food inflation, which is about 21%, uh, what is the federal government doing in that regard, in that regard to check the issue of uh, uh, you know, security so that Nigerians can be assured of food security? Thank you very much. A fantastic question. Uh, you've hit the nail on the head in the sense that there is, a, of course, a, a great nexus between security and agricultural production. We have seen that repeatedly. Uh, I think that the key for us is understanding, first of all, uh, as a nation, uh, that this is not a national problem as much as it is a regional problem. And appreciating that, I think if you look at the public analysis in the country, generally it has lacked the sophistication to take into account the fact that across the sub-region, you are seeing farmers and uh, farmers complain about the same thing. So, uh, you know, in Nigeria, the conversation tends to be, uh, you know, Yoruba, Fulani, or Igbo, Fulani, and all of this. What, what, what the reality is in places like Togo, Mali, uh, Niger Republic, Chad, and many others in the sub-region, even Ghana, is you'll hear the, the, the farmers complaining of the same thing. Why? Because what has happened is you have a, 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 peaceful, a peaceful set of herders, right, who had now been co-opted by these extremists that have come in from Yemen, Syria, and Iraq, etc. From Libya, they've come down and basically co-opted these herders and said, look, we will give you people weapons in exchange for, uh, in exchange for your, 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 your cooperation with us in terms of clearing land so that we can be taking over territories. That is how they've been uh, co cooperating. And so if people understand that this is a sub-regional threat, they would know that this is something that has to be tackled at a regional level. And that is why this, the president, President Mohamed Buhari, has been leading this effort in collaborating with the Chadians, the Nigerians, uh, and other partners through ECOWAS to say, look, we have to deal with these threats regionally. Because even if the Nigerian army gets it 100% right, as long as these people have places where they can do hit and run and go back across the border where they will gather and plan and all of that, we're going to continue to have problems. So it's going to take everybody in the sub-region uh, to deal effectively with these issues because all of it is affecting us commonly. Mr. Ajiri Ngilali, I wish we have more time to discuss this, but unfortunately, this is the much we can take. A senior special assistant to President Muhammad Buhari on public affairs. Thank you very much for joining us today. Thank you so much for having me. God bless you all.
All right, uh, when we return uh, on Plus Breakfast after this quick break, we'll be focusing on uh, the plane, uh, the military plane crash uh, of yesterday and the issues and um, safety in the skies in a moment. Do join us again. <laughs>